Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So our first session today is all about the future of participation at Wikimania. And we have Yolanda and Martin and Phoebe and Mache and Nangara just to go through the discussion. So over to them. Hello, good morning. Uh, so we have uh, one hour to talk about the future of Wikimania. We certainly don't have enough time. So this is uh, obviously just a glimpse. And we thought of organizing uh, this session basically by uh, focusing on two issues. Uh, the first one is uh, relevance. Uh, so why Wikimania is relevant? So, so there have been an uh, increasing number of uh, events in the Wikimedia movement. Why Wikimania in itself uh, is significant? What can be its impact and its specific impact? Uh, of course, we start from the idea that Wikimania has value. Uh, this is the starting point, but obviously we need to make it as significant as possible. The second issue is related to participation and scholarship. Not everybody can attend Wikimania. Uh, this is the reality. Scholarship are limited. And it is an important topic because uh, scholarship also determines who participates or who can participate in the event. Um, the idea is we're going to have a 10 minutes introduction. So I'm just going to show you a few slides uh, just to uh, make sure that we are all on the same page uh, related to uh, the basic information. We do a round uh, of uh, presentation and also some point of view of uh, uh, the people here on stage. And then we're just going to get down from the stage to actually discuss with you uh, what's your opinion and what you think about uh, the event and also if you have any proposal and any idea related to those topics. So first of all, uh, the location. Wikimania is a, an international event. Uh, it took place uh, in uh, different parts of the world and there is a willingness of organizing Wikimania in different areas of the world. The fact of uh, changing location every year uh, creates a complexity, so that's uh, not an obvious thing, but it's also something that we believe uh, is an added value of the event. So that is how it happens uh, uh, throughout time. Also the venue that hosted Wikimania varied throughout time. Uh, we had uh, quite a few universities involved, but also conference center, cultural center, uh, hotels, um, venues that sometimes are easier than others, obviously, in organizing the event. Um, and uh, lastly, uh, the number of attendees. In general, there is an average number of 800 people participating in the event, with few events that had a greater number. So. Uh, around uh, 1,400 participants, but they're quite exceptional. In general, the average number is 800 participants uh, with an event that is mostly in English. Sometimes there have been some translations, some uh, possibility of having uh, other, uh, other moment sessions in different languages, but it's quite predominant, uh, the English uh, uh, characteristic of Wikimania. Um, you can find uh, some more information on Meta. There is a uh, comparative page. Also, if you want to add information about previous Wikimedia, that would be precious to update those information. Um, from an uh, organizational point of view, uh, the Wikimania Steering Committee uh, is the group of people, the volunteers uh, that are past organizer and uh, people that have been engaged in uh, uh, previous Wikimania. Uh, and they have the role of advocating for Wikimania, but also selecting the locations and supporting uh, the organizer of uh, uh, current uh, Wikimania. Um, at the moment also we are thinking about how to enlarge the team. So you're also welcome if uh, you would like to join the committee or you would like to uh, also um, suggest the other members of the committee. Uh, please do not hesitate to contact us. Um, we, also, uh, we are also in the definition of the next uh, Wikimania, so uh, 2024 has been selected uh, and we are currently working on 2025 and 2026, so we are a bit changing the system to allow people to have more time to organize Wikimania. Uh, so this is just uh, an update. And I leave uh, the floor to uh, the others. Please. Yes, I, I would like also, maybe you can also uh, uh, state your position also about uh, uh, what you think about the media, also issues that you think are relevant, and then we can Hello, I'm Martin um, from Berlin, Germany, um, but also 
very interested in international topics and for that reason I've been member or organizer of the uh, scholarship committees over the past couple of years and to make participation possible uh, to Wikimania to get diverse group and um, I was always doing this together with others and this year it's with Nangara um, so that people from around the world can attend Wikimania um, and have a fair selection process while still knowing that we cannot make everyone happy and there has to be some kind of selection because there is a limitation in budget and of course we're here to look for, for your feedback on what could be improved and yeah so I'm heading over to the next one. Super, thanks. Uh, and thanks for all your work, Martin, on scholarships. It's amazing. Um, my name is Phoebe Ayers. I have been to all of the Wikimanias but one. Sad. <laughs> um, I helped organize the program for Wikimania 2006 and then 10 years later for Wikimania 2017. And I've helped out with other parts of the organization for uh, several others. Um, and I am currently vice chair of the steering committee and uh, have been for a number of years. We've been on the steering committee together, Yolanda and I. Um, so, you know, I really believe in making Wikimania both an accessible uh, experience to attend and also to organize and participate in. Um, and I'm happy to talk about, like, what we think the future of this global event for us should be. Uh, thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Maciej and I'm a relative newbie to the movement uh, in regards to my uh, fellow colleagues here on stage. I have started editing in 2016, but really joined the movement in 2019, just before the COVID pandemic. I've actually planned to go to Bangkok originally, but uh, it wasn't possible. And here I'm representing the uh, core organizing team for 2024 for the next Wikimania that is scheduled to happen in Krakow uh, in Poland. Thank you. This is not working. Hi, I'm Nengara. Um, this is actually the third Wikimania I've worked on. Um, and you can see it probably will be the last after dropping the microphone. Uh, <laughs> I've been on the steering committee for a little while. Um, I work on Bangkok which we never got off the ground because of um, some little bug that no one could see. Um, I worked on 2021, I got to help with the create the online experience and how we were going to do that and of course finally we're back here in Singapore which has been an amazing journey um, and as Martin alluded to I pretended to be in charge of the scholarships while Martin did all the work and now Giska's doing all the work for us. <laughs> Back to you, Alain. Yeah, it wasn't working. I think it's, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, now it works. <laughs> nice work. Sorry. Um, maybe we can start with the relevance. So, um, would you like maybe to start answering? So, what do you think is uh, the relevance of Wikimania? Uh, so, if you would like also to share your opinion, and then I'm just going to go down and uh, collect other hints uh, and ideas. Um, can anyone uh, help us with an Etherpad to take some notes? Uh, so that, oh, thank you very much. Fantastic. Yep, uh, there's so microphones, or there should be microphones. Yep, in each of the things, mic. if you want to move out there to ask any questions. So, first question, relevance. So, why should we do it? Uh, why it is important? Uh, what do you think uh, makes it different from other events? And what can bring to the movement uh, uh, specifically? Uh, if you want to maybe do a round them and then uh, I'm just going to go. Okay, while well, we get people moving to ask questions, I think one of the big important things is that personal contact, the chance meeting in corridors, listening to a speech or talk um, that you wouldn't normally switch on to. Um, when it was online or by itself, people would only go to the things that 
interest them and caught their attention, whereas now when you're in person, you know, walking into a room to listen or staying around after one talk to and hearing another and suddenly new ideas come along, I think that's such a valuable part of the experience. For me, Wikimedia uh, is relevant as it allows people from multiple communities, regions and countries to finally get to know together. I've came to the movement in a pretty weird time when everything moved online, late 2019, early 2020. And it's been quite hard to accomplish and even get to know many people uh, around here because they've all known each other for the last 10, 20, 15 years. Wikimania, uh, in just the last four days, allowed me and many of my friends to meet people that they would never probably normally meet, because there is no reason for me to go to country X and people from country X to go to Poland, but they may meet at some Wikimania, they may work together, they may start some cooperation together, and it removes the barriers between us. It's quite easy to say that we no longer need these type of events when it someone just saw already everything, knows everyone and have done everything, but it removes those barriers for those people that are just now trying to get into the movement, know the people and start collaborating. I'm so glad you had that experience this week, right? Like, I think that's what we hope for in Wikimedia. Um, I think that has been true for many of us at Wikimedia is that we have met people that we then not just became colleagues with, but became personal friends with, right? Or, or and form this kind of community that lasts year over year over year. Um, it's, I think many of us have had this experience of seeing people for the first time after four years who we also know very well and have seen online, right? And it's amazing to see people in person. I think Wikimedia, um, provides that. It also provides, Elena would speak to this, I think, a way to do outreach in your local community to talk about like Wikipedia is actually people, right? Like there are people behind the scenes and this is who we are. This is what we look like. Um, you too can be a Wikipedian, right? For people who just might encounter the conference in their community, their place. Um, it also provides a way I believe very strongly, uh, you can test this out for me next year, um, for people to become involved in the movement in a different way through organizing the event, right? Through producing a thing for um, your colleagues, your peers, uh, you can contribute in a very particular way, so. Yeah, and in times of, uh, carbon footprint discussions everywhere and such it's it's really tough to to think of a conference global conferences where everyone um has to fly tens of hours um including myself and so i was always uh, often thinking in the last years should we really have wikimania should we really have wikimania once a year, maybe twice a year, there are many great conferences um, related to smaller communities or uh, to continents, and um, it's definitely a discussion we can have how often Wikimania should take place, um, but it's really the only place where you can meet people from around the world and see their projects and give them visibility and start conversations. So for me, it's more like networking an event than having sessions because sessions we can also deliver online. It's, it's talking with people and uh, seeing what's going on around the world. And that's uh, given by Wikimania. Butch, I see you standing out there with a question. With an intervention too, please. Okay, so I'll be wearing two hats. Uh, first is uh, the being the Singapore organ uh, Singapore Wikimania organizer, and at the same time uh, a volunteer. Uh, so we have two major topics here: is the future of Wikimania, and then also the participation. Uh, first, for the future, this is not a question. Um, 
the feedback that I got on 2019, they mentioned Stockholm is the best Wikimania ever. So that fuels my motivation to keep all my notes uh, for the past three years. And uh, that's what we see right now. So it's, it's a great collaboration of the ECF people, get all the ideas. By the way, the idea of the karaoke is from our Australian colleagues and then the and Korean colleagues, and then uh, another is uh, from other uh, members of the ECF people, okay? So uh, my second uh, point is regarding the scholarships, okay? Uh, nothing personal, I don't want to mention a specific scholar, but I've been uh, receiving a lot of queries regarding this because uh, there are questions about term limits on the regional grants committees, term limits on the uh, board of trustees. So is there any possibility, despite there is a met meritocracy regarding the scoring system of the scholars, that we should be limiting the frequent flyers from attending Wikimanias in full scholarship? If you agree, we can also uh, collect I, I, some... I can't hear you. About, uh, um, if you agree, we can maybe collect some other ins on uh, also the relevance and then move to the scholarship. So also we yeah. give also some explanation on how it's structured at the moment and then uh, moving forward with the discussion. So is there any uh, uh, idea, concept you want to share about... Uh, the relevance or uh, uh, how we can make it more relevant uh, Wikimania. To me, for example, time is a very important element. So having time to prepare for Wikimania, having a, a selection that is uh, well ahead of time uh, makes a real difference because it allows to organize local events. Also the preparation to the event allows also to bring attention to the region, to the area, and uh, it allows also to have a broader impact uh, in the territory. So I think that is a, a an element that we are considering also for the future and that can uh, um, an, a systemic element that can bring something more I think there were someone raising a hand ah, uh, Leila please yeah, yeah, sure. um, first of all thank you so much for being on the steering committee and organizing Wikimania it's a lot of work behind the scenes um, in terms of relevance I think for me I want to just double down and um, it resonates with me that it's an event that removes some of the barriers that exist for us, for example, we focus on specific projects, specific regions, sometimes specific languages. So all of those, except the challenge of language basically, are almost removed for Wikimania. So we get a lot of exposure to different things that are happening across the movement. One question that I have is how much we want to remove this barrier and connect to other entities that can be in the open free knowledge ecosystem. So for example, we see, of course, Creative Commons being relatively present in, in this Wikimania, and this is great. Are there other entities that we want to create bridges with and remove and lift the barriers that we have through an event such as Wikimania? Thank you. Matt, do you want to... Oh. Pacek, do you want to respond? Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, please note if I heard you, heard you right, as we are having a bit of a trouble of uh, hearing uh, the questions on stage, because the speakers here are working. So, if I understand correctly, the second part of your question was regarding opening Wikimania for outside cooperation uh, and incorporating those organizations a bit more. Uh, having one conference for I imagine it can be Creative Commons, uh, it can be collaboration with other uh, networks, uh, uh, OpenStreetMap, uh, all, all the uh, similar, yeah. So without disclosing uh, too much information, uh, this is uh, being taken very much into the consideration. Uh, and uh, while I still have the mic, uh, I wanted to add one point. Uh, of relevance to what Butch mentioned before at the mic about Wikimania being organized as the original uh, attend. We've seen last year this being pioneered during the online edition where we had people at the COT from many, many different countries that have most likely never worked before. This year is the first in-person Wikimania organized by people from all across the world, uh, living in all of the countries in the region and some of them even outside of it. 
um, our Wikimania, we also try to bring the whole region and I can see a big benefit here, uh, a big exercise in capacity and uh, uh, trust to each other in bringing the event that not only one country, one organization can connect to, like it was done in the past, but in different times than to our movement that is growing and connecting and our regional hubs, our regional cooperatives are growing. I have also seen that the uh, French affiliate, while mentioning their expression of interest, has also expressed the interest of working with the entire Francophone community. I hope that in the future we'll see a bit more of Wikimania bringing this international cooperation into the event, into all of, into all of the actions surrounding it, as this I think maybe one of the most important and most relevant thing that Wikimania can bring to the movement. Uh, it can take out of, out of our silos, out of, out of our normal uh, corporations, out of our normal group of friends that we know all and we have always worked, and maybe we'll finally start talking to each other. Uh, uh to add on this, I think we um, achieved uh, the regional collaboration. ECF was uh, already something new in, uh, in the dynamic. We've been talking for many years about collaborating or joining events with Creative Commons, doing something together with OpenStreetMap, uh, so combining events. It never really worked, so we never reached that point. So it has always been one of the top possibilities, but we, it never actually happened. So it is something that uh, maybe if we want to plan it, we need to start planning it now. <laughs> so that is something that we can definitely consider, but we need to start a, a more official negotiation. And we didn't do it yet, even if uh, uh, there have been always uh, an openness and a willingness. Uh, so, but more a blah blah rather than actually. Uh, please. Yeah. Hi. Oh, sorry. I have one singular question. Oops. Sorry. I have a single question to Maciej after I make my comment. I think that Wikimania is immensely important as a networking enabler for the future because Maciej, seriously, you've been editing since 2016-17. Do you think you would be here if you didn't come personally to Wikipedia's 18th birthday back in 2019? Um, okay. Hello, hello. Yeah. So Wojtek is talking that actually my first contact with Wikipedians was me just finding about Wikimedia Poland's uh, party for Wikipedia's 18th birthday. Yeah, that I've, was the, your first in-person experience. Yes, I've heard about the event in the morning and I just decided to go there after work. To this day, people are making fun of me for appearing at the Wikimedia event wearing a suit and a shirt and a tie. Come on, it, it was birthday, it was a birthday <laughs> party, come on. Yes, but uh, I would say that uh, without coming to this event and then just a couple of weeks later to Wikimedia Poland uh, General Assembly, I would not be sitting here, I would not be a board member to Wikimedia Europe, I would not be organizing Wikimania. You would be online, probably. You would still be online. I don't think so. Th this, oh, was, th even. this was like the push I needed to get like involved into more than just adding commas. Okay, hands up for much. In the yeah. I think that's, I think that's wonderful and an experience we all have, whether it's a local meetup or a regional meetup or a thematic meetup or Wikimania itself. Those in-person connections are what keep, keep us coming back, what drive us to go past the two or three years of this is fun, let's edit a little bit. Um, once you start talking to people and making friends in real life, you really do keep on going. And that was the same for me. You know, I first edited in 2005. First meetup was in 2007, that drove me along. First Wikimania was in 2012. And at that stage, I was having some issues with some things and kind of, yeah, do I stay, do I go? And that time in Washington was amazing. I met a lot of amazing people and I stuck. <laughs> thank you. I, uh, please, Lodewijk. Yes, thank you so much for, uh, for all the work you're doing, um, both in this year and in previous louder. years of uh, Wikimania. Uh, can you do it a bit louder? It's difficult, oh, it's it's difficult to hear you. you okay, um, I'll talk a little louder, thank you. Um, I was wondering, for all the people that are watching and that are wondering, should I 
apply to organize Wikimania in the future. What would you tell to a community that is considering to apply, to, to enter a bid? Why should they do it? Because the international benefits are obvious, but what do you, what do you get out of it as a local community? And what conditions do you need to meet as a local community not, to not destroy yourself in the process? Uh, yes, that's a great question. That's a set of questions, right? Those are different questions. Um, what could you consider? Uh, I think the people are the most important element. Um, do you have people who want to run a Wikimania with you, right? This is not a solo endeavor. It's very difficult to run anything by yourself, but it's impossible to run a conference like this by yourself. I will say um, the foundation, the Wikimedia Foundation is here for you. Uh, this is an event that is co-produced with the local community and the Wikimedia Foundation and um, you know all these logistics and things like that. We're not expecting local groups uh, to do all of this by yourself, right? Yeah, um, oh, the foundation has been absolutely fantastic. Yeah with their support over the last couple of years and it's really making a difference. So I don't think people should worry that like, oh, I've never booked a convention center. Like who has booked a convention center before, right? We, we can help you with those things. Um, but what you do need is an enthusiastic local group who wants to, wants to you know, host, uh, wants to be up here on stage, wants yeah. to make a program, wants to showcase your local place. Um, wants to bring people to their home city you know <laughs> poor steering committee has been hearing yeah. from me since 2012 let's go to perth let's go to perth let's go to perth oh, look, i'll help with bangkok there and are, i'll help get involved yeah. just keep persisting we for are sure. hearing it for sure there is also however there are things that are out of anyone's control uh, at least anyone here in this room perhaps um Things like how easy is it to obtain a visa to your country, right? Um, I live in the United States. We all know it's very, very, very difficult to get a visa to the United States from many, many countries in the world. Because we want to be a global conference, because we want everyone to participate uh, as to the greatest extent possible, um, we think about visas a lot on the steering committee, uh, as Nangara and folks know. I you wanted to comment about uh, I wanted to comment about the other part of uh, the question of what it brings to the community what's like the let's not call it the benefit because uh, everything comes with costs and uh, everything comes with costs and uh, profits for the lack of better words I would say that for our community in the CE it already brought uh, First of all, a lot of energy, a lot of happiness. Wikimania is coming to our region for the first time in almost 15 years. At the moment, uh, our community heard that uh, Wikimania will happen in Krakow. They were ecstatic. Uh, and I hope that later today we'll be able to share with you one of uh, the things they started created just that. I can already see that this is a big exercise in capacity for the organizing chapter or organizing people. Um, this is a big event. And from what I've heard for this year and from what I hope for next year, it won't be a, a crashing mountain coming on the local community. Uh, we've already experienced a lot of support from the foundation. A foundation has dedicated an amazing team of staff uh, to help us, to train us. People that are specialized in our region, like local movement comm specialists, people that have event management uh, experience, people that have been uh, working on these types of events almost all of their professional life. And I hope that all of people in our team, not only the main COT, but up to uh, the volunteers that will only help us for a few hours during the event, they will learn a lot of things, not only about Wikimedia, but also about trust and safety, finance management, event management, uh, I can see every volunteer working at Wikimania learning something that will help them elsewhere. I'll say two more things, just a little bit more before Yolanda, you should jump in also on this question. Um, we also think, you mentioned coming to your region, we think about going to different regions, right? We don't want the conference to be always in the same place, certainly not the same country, but also, um, you know, 
time zones. Like we want it to be a shorter flight for uh, people um, at least some years, right? Um, here's the thing though, there's a lot of places in the world, right? There's a lot of places that we would love to have this conference, uh, that would love to host this conference. And um, so it's not like a perfect rotation, right? There's not uh, a plan where it will go to certain countries in this order. Um, but we do think about moving around, right? So Wikimania is in different places. And the last thing I want to say about that is Wikimania is not our only event uh, in the movement, right? And I'm curious what you all think about this, but one thing that often local groups um, who are interested in running an event end up doing is running perhaps a more regional conference and getting that experience and seeing what it's like to run a conference. And often I find a lot of value in the regional conferences that we have uh, because often people can come to those who can't fly around the world to Singapore, you know? So, um, Wikimania is not the only thing that you can plan to run if you want to run a conference in Wikimedia. Okay, but I think we need also to move to the participation, which is the other topic of our discussion. Um, as we were mentioning at the beginning, we're talking about a conference that has a, a limited capacity. The reality is uh, scholarship have been given throughout time, uh, but maximum 500 people have benefited somehow of a scholarship. There are scholarships from the Wikimedia Foundation, other chapters. Sometimes participants can attend also with funds from their institution or uh, research uh, uh, units. Uh, but the reality is that uh, uh, participation obviously uh, is not uh, uh, that democratic and there are criteria also to select the scholarship. Uh, maybe uh, Martin can uh, introduce the, the system that have been uh, used this year and we can answer uh, also the question of Butch related to regions. Please. Yeah. Um, so scholarship process is more, more or less uh, like that. Um, there is an application form. So Wikimedia Foundation scholarships, uh, just, uh, just to be clear. Um, there's an application form that asks for your relevant experience and the way you want to share your information uh, on Wikimania, how, how you want to participate. And uh, this year we got more than 3,000 applications and had to uh, figure out the valid ones and the, the ones of uh, active contributors with at least five, uh, 50 edits. There was a bit of screening. Um, if there uh, were concerns raised before uh, to Wikimedia Foundation, and we ended up with 1,200 valid application, applications, 1,200 1, people who would definitely enrich this conference who has applied for a scholarship. And then there was a jury, the, uh, each year there's a jury that uh, gives scores on um, uh, special criteria that was um, over the past couple of years stayed more or less the same, was changed a bit for this year and uh, out of these we got around 120 to 150 people. There's a ratio for each region of the world and this is always um, set by the a local COT uh, to get the right people to the conference. Of course, we know that there in some regions, uh, chapters, affiliates provide more scholarships. So it's the number uh, Yolanda was mentioning um, from other um, organizations. And uh, for this year, particularly, we were looking into uh, diversity of uh, countries who participate, so we uh, took the results from the jury process uh, in phase two and um, tried to get as many countries as possible here still basing on the scores. Uh, should I dig directly to, into uh, Butch's question, like um, participation? Yeah. Okay, so you want me to repeat? Okay. No, no, I, re I remember okay. the question. That's fine. So, but it, 
Do, do you still want to hear me? Okay. okay uh, 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 sorry, Martin. Could Butch ask the question because I don't believe I don't think I can. So I can. I can. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, by the way, I, I, uh, I would like to give a little briefer also on how uh, Krakow got the announcements a little bit early. Uh, because uh, the, I'm also wearing a regional uh, grants committee hat, so we just need to make sure that uh, if in case is a, an affiliate is interested to send out their own scholars, that they know how to plan it effectively on their annual plan. That's why uh, they have their own scholarships and plan it accordingly. So my, the question that I have earlier is, uh, this is a very burning question that I receive each and every Wikimania and also with this Wikimania, why this X person had been in Wikimania for X number of years already, for free, he's already, uh, they joke on me, he already, he already or she already got uh, X number of flyer miles uh, on going to Wikimania. Uh, for, of course, uh, subsidized by the foundation. So we also receive some feedback that there's, uh, they request uh, term limits on grant committees, uh, board of trustees, why not scholars also have some term limits that they, they have a certain limit of number of times that they could attend uh, Wikimedia until they get another chance to get a scholarship uh, beyond uh, the meritocracy process that we have. Yeah, I think one of the things that we considered starting and spoke about with the scholarship process for Singapore was that it had been four years or it would have been four years since we were last all together in person. And I think to panelise someone and say, well, bad luck, you went to Stockholm four years ago and like the rest of the community have done amazing things since, you can't go. Now, it may be that we can look, Krakow will look at it next year differently because it's only going to be eight or nine months. Is it eight or nine months between now and about July next year? Oh, 11 months. Okay. <laughs> My maths isn't all that good when I've only got one hand to count on. Um, they will look at it differently to say, look, you had that opportunity a lot more recently maybe you don't get the next opportunity next year and we look to bring new people in. But it's always a balance of we need experienced people in the room as much as we need new people in the room. Because if we bring everyone that's never been before, then we have no one to share their experience and learn from. Martin? Yeah, so this question is of course a very important one and it's not raised for the first time. Obviously, um, however, <laughs> I, um, I feel a bit like the only constant since 2012 on that. So I've been a, on the scholarship committee um, in various roles over the past couple of years, co-lead or scholarship committee member, etc. It's really it really depends on how much time you can spend on improving things when it comes to thousands of applications. Um, so th for this time we had to uh, spend a lot of time on the tool to actually get people um, uh, scored by the jury and we also had to find people to, um, uh, to help scholars after they get selected. Um, I'll share uh, insights what changing hats now as well. I'm also working for Wikimedia Deutschland and I'm there the delegation lead for the German scholars, so Wikimedia Deutschland gives additional scholarships. And at that place, I could already change some of the uh, criteria to get a more diverse group to the conference. I'm convinced that we, we definitely have to have both things. We have, new, we have to have newcomers at Wikimedia, but we also have to have people here um, who are experienced community leaders who, um, who are organizers of big events um, and, and have s special knowledge on that. And we, there's, we also have to have um, 
a system how to get them to Wikimania. Um, and Wikimedia Deutschland, we have a percentage for new uh, applicants and for returning applicants. Uh, that was the first step and we tried to we tried that out and we found out that it's still more people um, uh, applying who have been to a Wikimania. Of course it makes sense. You now know how this conference works. So it's much, much easier for you to um, answer the questions in the uh, application form because you know, oh, it's about networking and there are sessions, I can participate that way. Of course, we can try to, to make newbies um, more aware of, of how the conference looks like, but we learned at Wikimedia Deutschland that this is not enough. And for that reason, um, we tried out for the first time in 2019 a system we've called Tandem Scholarships. So instead of giving an equal number of scholarships to new and returning scholars, we are uh, giving a limited number to returning scholars, but additional scholarships with tandem partners. So those based in Germany who um, made friends or contacts um, at previous Wikimanias and still want to work on these topics, they can apply for tandem scholarships with people from outside of Northwest South Europe. And um, of course, this comes along with other questions like bringing your own friends once again to Wikimania. But um, it's still, I think, at least a bit fairer, uh, more fair to, um, to do that way, to, to actually, for those who know already about Wikimania, to give them some extra task to do that. It's logistically impossible to do that for hundreds of scholars at, uh, uh, for Wikime uh, Wikimedia Foundation scholarships. But I'm very open to work on that. However, <laughs> there has to be some group that definitely wants to work on scholarships. And it has always been more or less that another person and I were doing the scholarships, they disappeared, a new one showing up for next Wikimania, and there we were talking about being exhausted after the conference, etc. So we have to find a way to actually work on this uh, in a committee. Please, sir. Uh, All right. So, by the way, I was one of the members of the scholarship committee. It was very interesting to seeing the all out of applications. It is hard to evaluate seriously with the, just for the text that they're providing and providing just a score with that. I know some, some peers I know in the applications, they had a significant committee, I mean the committee engagements has been denied even because of like, because this is kind of the limitation. That's what I believe. Okay, so what I was feeling is with this and what I was hearing from the conversation is kind of the affiliates can be having more perspective to like the evaluate the sending the better like the scholars and the whoever is product the committee member from their community can be joining us at the Wikimania. I know Wikimedia Deutschland or like the large affiliates, they can possible to send scholarship by their budget, but like the, what I was thinking on our side is so many affiliates are feeling like they're like having limitation to apply the grants because if they want to send in like, for example, like the one to two scholarship, it is like kind of having like the two, three thousand to four thousand dollar increase on budget. So like it is going to be, I know Dutchland is going to be very small, um, tiny increase, but like the some affiliates is going to be like the huge part of the increase on the budget. So it's like kind of what I was thinking was probably the providing the support and like the foundations of engagement with the, those kind of stuff for the opportunity, providing opportunities as well with the cooperation of local affiliates. That's what I was thought. Thank you. So, uh, Yang Jin to, uh, to, um, yeah, uh, to uh, comment a bit on what you mentioned. Unfortunately, uh, I don't think it would be the place of uh, this year's organizers, next year's, or any future organizers 
um, to do that directly. Uh, but I can see a place for uh, Wikimania organizers to coordinate with uh, the affiliates in their need of grant increases. It is not for us to say whether it should be done or not. There is a grant process, but uh, I know that certain regional grant officers have worked in the past with uh, their respective affiliates to allow for that. After the pandemic, uh, a bit has changed, but I hope that affiliates will be able to send more people to Wikimania as this only benefits all of us. Uh, I wanted to come back also to what Butch mentioned about the questions being asked by people who are attending Wikimania frequently. Uh, I've had some discussion about it with some people here at Wikimania and before. Um, and this is a tough nut to crack because there are certain people that have attended Wikimania for years now, some of their own expense, and we cannot prohibit that. Some have attended many multiple Wikimanias. <laughs> uh, yeah. You banned me from Wikimania because I've been to too many, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, but uh, there are people who received scholarships for multiple years. But uh, without any real uh, proof of systemic failure or without more data, I wouldn't want to comment on setting any process, like, for example, saying you can only attend two out of every four Wikimanias, and that's all. Because in some way, it would be penalizing people that still work and continue to work in certain areas. I'm quite well known in the Polish Wikimedia community for telling a, a bit more experienced community members that I do not consider past uh, actions towards Wikimedia as valuable as current ones. And I'm against people coming to Wikimania for things they did 10, 15 years ago because, quite frankly, nobody cares, or at least I don't. Uh, but if there is a person that still uh, continues to work, continues to contribute, continues to grow their projects, I don't think they should be penalized just because they are good at their job. Although we have to find a way that also allows people that only started contributing and are now only starting their projects to appear as well, because it is very extremely hard to uh, be in competition with someone who's done a project 15 years in a row and a person that just started last year. Yeah, it is a difficult thing to assess people. It's never something that a Wikimedia would find comfortable to say your work is better than someone else. Sorry, Youngjin, I also want to thank you for your work and the rest of the team that did the review process. It was just amazing how you got through 1,200 applicants, looking at them and, yeah, I'm just astounded by and thankful for you guys doing it because I was able to sit back and just read the end results. Um, on that, we changed and had a scale. We did focus on a point system that was a lot more expanded. And when reviewing, we wanted links to what people had done. And we, want, we asked the reviewers to look for people that have been doing stuff and been active in the last 12, 18 months at the time they did the review. We were looking for people that were um, really creating something and doing something in the post-pandemic. We weren't looking for people that were riding on the coattails of a story they created five years ago or 10 years ago. You had to be active. Um, I think that's our biggest challenge is finding the people that are doing the work and getting the message to them to actually apply, especially new people. Because we really do miss those people, not by choice, but because they don't know. Um, and whereas all the old hands know that, hey, look, Wikimania is coming up. We know the scholarship process is gonna come soon. Crack how you've got to think about it. I've heard rumours they want us to open the scholarship process next week. October. Or are you going to have a rest first? <laughs> well, maybe not first week. We actually have Kabi sitting in the audience with us. She will be running the scholarship process. But we remain committed to starting the process much earlier this year. Maybe not next week. Let's give us at least 10 days. Yeah, we'll uh, let you get home first. But uh, it is our goal to have the decisions on scholarships ready 
in the early weeks of next year. So we want to give at least five to six months to people to apply for visas that they will need to visit uh, Poland. Yeah. Give, we have a, please boot. Okay, so uh, by the way, this is not my personal uh, uh, opinion, but this is based on the feedback that I'm receiving. Is there any way a, a, an applicant have a feedback mechanism? Because uh, I received one uh, Wikimanian who had been attend, who attend Wikimania Singapore for the first time after five attempts. So he didn't know what, what did the, he got it this time. It, it could be a lottery or something because they don't know at what point on the questions they got it right this year and didn't get last three attempts. There's really no right or wrong answers when you apply. It's what you're doing but it's also what everyone else is doing. And we've got 1,200 applicants. We come down to 200 people that we decided on back March, April, May. Um, it's hard to give immediate feedback because we've got to focus on getting those people here, the visa process, the letters, all that organisational stuff is attracts our attention. But um, we also don't want you comparing yourself to other people. Everyone's doing an amazing job. The fact that you weren't able to be in the room and you're watching online doesn't mean you're not doing anything great. It just means that our limited opportunities. Yeah, um, just to clarify my question, this is not compared to the other scholar. Is They're comparing uh, to their own yeah. application previously. So uh, they, they would like to know, um, is there any way for me to improve my scholarship application in the future? Because this, this, this is the same way that we're doing in uh, grant applications. If in case they found out that the application is really terrible, there is a, a way, a different staff who would be doing that feedback mechanism for uh, a, gr a grant applicant to make their application better. So uh, again, yeah. uh, we don't want to burden the, the existing scholarship committee to do this role. Yeah, um, everyone wants to jump in here. Um, I'm quickly going to say is what the people we wanted for Singapore, you could improve your application for Singapore for next year, but it isn't in Singapore, it's in Krakow. They'll have a whole different type of criteria next year. Um, there isn't a right or wrong answer. There isn't a big learning experience on how you fill it in. Oh, and so yeah, it's more or less like most of the years, past years, I was doing the more or less maintenance around scholarships, and the selection criteria has always um, been coming from the CUTs, be it in uh, diverse. So like um, ratios for the regions, like uh, the the composition of regions, etc. So you could have also given a, a Butch a, a criteria on newcomers to Wikimanias or returning attendees, and we would I would have processed that. But if I don't get that information, like this, and <laughs> and. <laughs> Uh, can I also add something? Uh, what is also frustrating is that we decline a lot of scholarship of people that actually deserve a scholarship. So that is the scenario we are in. So there are great people, great contributor, but we don't have enough slot. So the reality is that then we introduce other criteria. We try to have people coming from different countries, a representative of different topics. So there are plenty of other criteria, but simply because we don't have enough scholarship for everybody and we don't have enough scholarship for everybody that deserves a scholarship. So that makes it a, a, a situation that is a bit complicated also for this. So it's not that uh, uh, scholarship are declined because uh, uh, 
among uh, the 1,000 uh, scholarships that were selected, they already passed the first phase of, uh, so they were all eligible. So we're talking about a very wide number and we can only accept 10%. I would like also to encourage you, if you're interested in being part of the scholarship committee, because it is also an incredible experience. So you have in front of you uh, a portrait of the community. It's uh, one of the few chances in which you have people telling you about themselves, uh, what they do, how they are active. And it is quite a beautiful experience to actually see from behind the scene uh, uh, how the community is uh, working, what they are doing. So it is uh, uh, really a great- There is uh, a thousand is, amazing uh, I think, uh, people out there. It's quite touching. Sometimes uh, I, re I remember in one of the uh, scholarship committee, somebody said, but this is not a, a, a participant, this is a hero. <laughs> it was the, in the evaluation criteria because you have really amazing people working in the community. So it is uh, also something that, uh, well, it's a volunteer task. It's quite a long one because of the number of application, but please, apply if you can uh, provide some time uh, uh, also to this uh, this kind of contribution to Wikimania. Yeah, uh, we've got another question. Yes, please. Sorry. And then we only have a few minutes left, so oh, I think, please. yeah, please. one question and then, and then we we'll wrap up. Yeah. Hi, I came from India, so there are quite a few uh, self-funded participants from southern part of India, and uh, I'm taking a consulted feedback from them. So they say that not many yes, Wikimedians who are doing great. Talk a little bit closer to the microphone. Yeah. So many Wikimedians who spoke to me, they are saying that not many Wikimedians who are doing great work can have an art of writing a good scholarship application. They are struggling with writing a good scholarship application. They don't know what all the things that they, they can highlight, what all the things that are relevant to scholarship committee. Uh, they think in naive ways sometimes, like uh, it is hard for them. And they also think in their own regional languages, not in English. And it is very difficult for them to articulate in a way that it is uh, cutting the whole. Yeah. Of course, if uh, the scholarship committee would have already been found and would ha not have to be found each year again, um, and we would have to look for tools again and again. Um, we could spend more resources on helping uh, people writing their application. Um, there, there were some, some attempts on that. I remember 2014 uh, that a handbook more or less was written for that. But it's not up to date, of course. So. Um, uh, my suggestion is, looking at Wikimedia Foundation here, maybe to consider um, a standing scholarship committee so that it's l like the Wikimania steering committee, so that some of the things that consume time um, would be uh, reduced so that we could focus more on things like how to write applications and such. There's simply not that time right now because of the process, how it is designed right now, which is why we are talking here. We have another question, but it's just one Please. minute left. Please. Sure. Uh, not a question, actually. Hi, everyone. My name is Kelsey. I'm from the Wikimedia Foundation. It's been really exciting to see so many people here at the session this morning who are excited about and invested in the future of Wikimania. My request for all of you is later today in your email inboxes, you'll receive a link to fill out the survey for Wikimania 2023. We look at this survey as a large part of our event evaluation, and that you can share your feedback there as a way of really helping us improve Wikimania for future years. So please and thank you for taking the time today to share your feedback. Yep, and you know, they need that survey for the funding to show like Wikimedia matters to us. Uh, Wikimedia matters to the foundation, Wikimedia matters to the community, so. Um, thank you all for coming. I know that there's lots of former organizers out there, uh, also the other members of the steering committee, current organizers, future organizers, talk to us. Um, there wasn't a lot of time for discussion, which we were hoping for, so definitely talk to us as over today, over email, over going forward. There will be calls for participation for scholarships committee, for program committee, for maybe other committees. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, 
So get involved with that. We will put out a call also for people who are interested in join, joining the Wikimania Steering Committee um, later on this year. Thank you all for coming to another future Wikimedia Thank you. session. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you to our panelists. Um, just for everyone in the audience, we have snacks and tea and coffee served downstairs on the concourse. And our next session with Ashley Boyd is at 11.15.